We all know that Google's strategy for a really long time was to be really consistent in terms of their camera hardware, right? Use the same sensors year after year after year and allow their AI, their algorithms to get better and better and to produce better and better images through that process. Now with the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, they have gone away from that to some degree. They've finally upgraded from that same old 12 megapixel sensor and they've jumped up to something that's physically a whole lot better than what they had before. But that being said, with the newly released Pixel 6a, they are still using that tried and true 12 megapixel primary and another 12 megapixel for the ultra wide. You may be thinking to yourself, Shane, there are a ton of mid-range phones in that same price range that have way on paper better cameras than the Pixel 6a. However, I think when you start seeing these photo samples, you're going to have the same reaction that I did when I was taking them. These look really, really good. Let's jump into them before I talk any more now. So this is a shot that a lot of my cameras, a lot of my phones struggle with. This is a crepe myrtle and it is a very interesting shade of red. There's a lot of details and like I said, a lot of my phones kind of struggle with this shot. The Pixel 6a does a pretty good job. This is very detailed. We are up very close, so fair enough, it's going to be detailed, but it doesn't really struggle with the different tones here where some of it is much more lit than others. It does a really good job of exposing this shot all the way around. And like I said, stays pretty much in focus all the way through, good detail all the way through. Another shot that I like to use are with some of the roses in the backyard because their colors are so vibrant they tend to just do weird things with lower end cameras and the Pixel 6a has no problem here at all. Absolutely demolishes this and this is not portrait mode. We're just up close enough that this is a natural bit of bokeh. Really good job here as well. A little bit more foliage here. I don't remember what this plant is in the front yard that we planted, but it's got a really good amount of detail here. These little tiny hairs that you can look at all over. It does a really good job of pulling all that out. Look at the vibrancy of that green, how nice and clear that is. And again, exposure looking absolutely picture perfect. Sticking with exposure, this is one of those ones that is really difficult for a lot of phones because we're more lit back here than we are up front in the trunk of this tree. So a lot of times what happens is this stuff is okay, this stuff's okay, but the trunk, you lose most of your detail. It's mostly in shadow. Well, not with the Pixel 6a. It absolutely destroys this. It gets plenty of detail up here in the front. Does a really good job of retaining these details without over brightening them and making them look unrealistic. Now the Pixel 6a does, like I said, have that 12 megapixel ultra wide. It's 114 degrees in terms of the ultra wide. So it's not super duper wide, right? It's not a crazy wide angle, but it's there and it does a pretty good job. And with a lot of wide angle lenses, you get a pretty good reduction in clarity. You get a little bit of grain and so forth in the darker areas. And we're definitely getting that to some degree here. You can see that there and you can see some of the details here as I zoom in and this clears up. It's not nearly as good as it is on the primary, but I think it overall does a decent enough job. Looking at the wide angle again here, you're gonna really notice it's not that wide. I mean, you don't have a ton of distortion here on the edges because of that, but it's kind of a give and take, right? It doesn't look super fish eye looking like some wide angles, but it also just doesn't really do a whole lot to differentiate itself from the standard lens. Let's zoom in on copper here and some of these plants. And the detail is okay. The exposure is spot on as usual. Now, while there is no telephoto lens, you can actually push this thing all the way to 7X, which is just going to be digitally cropping in. That's what we've done here. The detail is actually better than I thought it was going to be to just be digitally cropping in on a 12 megapixel sensor. Not something I would advise doing, but it's there if you want to. That being said, a 2X zoom, digitally speaking, on that primary lens is actually shockingly good. Look at the details on this. This is actually not that far off from the 2X zoom on something like my Z Fold or my Surface Duo 2, and it's doing it completely digitally. It's actually very impressive. Portrait mode, of course, has long been a strong suit of Google's cameras. It's a very recognizable portrait mode. The bokeh is very intense. So this is something you're either going to like or you're not going to like. This is my boy Rutherford. I think it did a pretty good job here. The bokeh does kind of fall off. Looks a little bit strange down here, but it's kind of close to him. Doesn't really draw my attention. Detail is very, very good otherwise. 
And then back inside the house with a little bit worse lighting on copper here, it continues to do a really good job. You can see the, the focus falling off there on her ear. A little bit of grain, but again, this is in some lower light, so pretty good. Back outside, I actually managed to uh, catch her munching on some grass. Had a piece she didn't like there, and it actually, this is kind of cool. It's a little bit gross, but look how in focus this is. This was a quick moment, so the shutter speed outside, very, very impressive. What about portrait mode on a human being? I think it does a decent job here. A little bit more grainy than I was expecting it to be, if I'm being honest. I don't love that it zooms in automatically there. This is just okay. I thought this would be better given the fact that I have a light here above me, but it's it's okay. Flip it around to the selfie camera, which if I'm not mistaken is only eight megapixels and you kind of get what you would expect here. It's okay. Again, I'm sitting in front of a light, so I would have expected this to be a little bit better. It's not super impressive portrait mode on. It does kind of brighten things up a little bit, zoom in a little bit and blur out the edges. Hair always is a problem for every portrait mode. So I'm not shocked by this result either. What about night mode? So this was taken in the room that I am currently in, which is again, reasonably well lit. So then we shut the light off. And this was our result here with kind of a middling light. The night mode did kick in for this and it did a really good job. In fact, you really can't even tell that it was any darker. Then I shut off all the lights, closed all the doors, made it very dark, and this was the result. I really can't stress enough to you how dark this actually was. There is no way that I could have read any of this text in person, but you can see here that the Pixel 6a is able to actually bring this back out. Now, you can also argue that maybe it does too much when it comes to these night scenes because it doesn't look like it was low light at all. It just looks like kind of a bad picture taken in good lighting, but that is absolutely not the case. All right, we are walking and filming at 1080p 30 FPS. And the reason I'm filming at those settings is because that is how it comes automatically. So we're assuming the purchaser of this phone might not know exactly what they're doing they might not change these settings so these are the settings as they come but like i said pay special attention to the detail the sound the stabilization which is always quite good on these pixel devices what about for selfie video we're using that front facing selfie camera for this and these settings are again stock values as they come on the device how does this look so in terms of just raw camera performance, honestly, this thing is punching well above its weight class. Despite the fact that it is outspecced by pretty much every phone around it, every phone below it almost as well at this point, it still delivers some of the best shots I've seen on any smartphone. And I'm not kidding when I tell you this, it looks absolutely fantastic. There are a few weak points here and there, which I talked about over those shots. But for the most part, the consistency, the lack of shutter lag, the shutter speed itself, all of it very, very solid. It is a camera system that you can pretty much pull out, open your camera, take one shot, and you're gonna be pretty confident that you got the shot that you wanted. And on top of that, there are some extra little features, some frills that add some value to this like Magic Eraser, which I will demo for you quickly now. So if you don't know, Magic Eraser is this really cool tool where it will automatically sometimes, and other times slightly more manually, remove distractions or objects from your photo. So let's hit edit, let's go to tools, and you will see Magic Eraser there. And it's actually gonna look for suggestions, things it thinks I might want to remove. And it's gonna see all these light poles back here. So let's go ahead and let it erase them and you'll see how impressive that is. Now, if I start really looking, I can still see some of the power line. Oh, did not mean to do that. You'll still see some of the power lines that are there. But I think if you're not really looking for it, that might be an improvement, but I wanna get rid of these things over here. So let's see how this actually works. If you just circle those boxes there, it's actually going to identify them and it's going to remove them. Now let's say I want to get rid of that door propped up against that barn. Well, now that's gone as well. And I can zoom back out. And again, if you look really closely, it's something that you're going to see. But if you're not looking that closely, if you're not pixel peeping, you're not gonna notice anything there. Now there's also another feature called camouflage. Let's say I don't wanna actually get rid of those boxes, but I wanna make them less noticeable. I can circle them and it'll actually gray them out so that your eye is just less likely to be drawn to it. So with this thing, you've got a really rock solid camera system, a really consistent camera system. You've also got those Google frills on top like Magic Eraser, which are really good. You know, there are some apps in the Play Store like Retouch that can mimic some of the functionality, but 
I think this is probably better than retouch in a few different ways. And the way that it's kind of done automatically, just circling the object and it finds it and removes it automatically. That's a really, really nice feature. The camera system on the Pixel 6a is as good as phones, nearly twice its price in my estimation. Guys, thanks for watching this quick Pixel 6a camera review. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the link in the description if you do want to purchase this phone for yourself. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.